everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about bottlenecks. So I'll do a quick drawing here. I'm at the field. Reno, can you pan around? I'm at the field verified office. Uh, they deployed their first uh, training today for exterior envelope uh, management. And I was here as a part of that. So Reno and I are flying back to California to finish the tax book. And then we're going to head back to back here to Phoenix, interestingly enough. So bottlenecks. Uh, this is an interesting thing. I love the an analogy or the image that Nicholas Modig put in his book. He talked about airports and it's funny, Reno and I are about to go to the airport. So uh, when you come into an airport, you come into checking, that slows, you know, where you, where you check in and you check your bag and then you go into security, right? And then you go to the gate <clears throat> and then you do boarding and the whole nine. So if you were actually to see this kind of like a bottle and I like this thought, uh, that it, when you see, if you saw a Tabasco sauce holder and, and the sauce comes out like really slow, right? And it, that's intentional. So you let, you want that bottleneck. You don't want the Tabasco sauce to come out super fast. When you're doing wine, uh, or not doing wine, when you're drinking wine, uh, gosh, I, it's been so long, I don't even remember what they look like. Let's say that was a wine bottle. You want that bottleneck when you're pouring your glass of wine. You don't want all of it to come out, right? But if you were to put a, uh, what do they call this? Uh, your hot sauce, what do they call it? Is it tapatio? Anyway, if you put like a tapatio bottleneck on a wine bottle and it just like dribbled out, you'd be really frustrated. So when we talk about bottlenecks, we want to have them the right size, right? So you look at the airport, uh, getting to the airport su super easy. Then the check-in, there's kind of a bottleneck walking to security is great okay then it's a little bit of a bottleneck <clears throat> going to the great gates is pretty easy then it's a pretty big bottleneck and then you fly and so when you look at this like literally it looks like this this was easy right getting to the airport the check-in was a bottleneck walking wasn't the security was a bottleneck walking wasn't the gate where you could board the plane was it so there's all these bottlenecks and the thing is we have to find in our organizations where our bottlenecks are and have them be the right size so we don't want tabasco size or or tapatio size bottlenecks on wine bottles right and we don't want wine bottle size bottlenecks on tap, tabasco or tapatio size bottles we want the right size uh, bottlenecks or in a flow efficient organization you would want to level this out to have it be to where it's just it, everything's flowing right through and you eliminate the bottlenecks interesting thing in an organization when you widen or remove a bottleneck other bottlenecks will show up other places i believe that's called the law of bottlenecks so here's something that really helped me and reno's getting tired of holding the camera so i'll hurry up here but there was this lady in the book uh, i think it was called the bottleneck rules i'll have to find it I did a LinkedIn post. I think it's called The Bottleneck Rules. It's a really short book. And it's based off of Eli Goldbratt's uh, book, The Goal, which I really liked. But he gave an example of a lady who was having difficulty getting vendors paid, contractors paid. And she went to this other person and said, hey, I'm having difficulty. And he asked, okay, what are the different steps? Well, the different steps are, you know, the, the invoices come in, right? They go through processing, uh, then they go through approvals, and then they they go out and, and checks are, are cut, so they get paid, right? So he asked her, and I'll do a little symbol here. I don't know if this is inappropriate or not, but the guy, girl, anyway. Uh, so how, how many of these can you do an hour? 80. Um, what was this one? I can't remember. What did I write here, Reno? Uh, invoice oh, price pricing yeah or or, or confirmation yeah. yeah anyway they can do 60 of these an hour she can approve like six an hour i i think that's what it said in the book and they can pay like 160 an hour so he was like where's your bottleneck it's right here in the approval process and she was like oh my gosh i can immediately fix that bottleneck he was like oh how how do you know and she said well because i'm that step <laughs> meaning I'm the one that approves the invoices and I've previously been spending my time dealing with angry customers on this end instead of spending time here approving invoices 
if I spend more time here, even twice the amount of time, and take this from six to 12, or from 12 to 24, I won't have to deal with the angry customers on this end. She had identified the bottlenecks, and this was something that she didn't really notice until they actually get eyes to see and start to see where do things slow down, where what is the constraint, what is holding us up. In construction, the same kind of a theory applies in all of our processes, whether it's office or field, what is taking the longest? Where's our bottleneck and how can we increase the capacity? Because ideally, if, if you could increase the capacity of this to like, let's say 48, and I'm gonna make some people mad here, so stay with me. You would wanna slow everybody down to, let's, let's choose an even number, to 50 in, in, in intake, uh, the co pricing confirmation to 50, the approval process to 50, and how many get paid a day, 50, even process, and some of this extra capacity could come over here and help these processes over here help your bottleneck to flow. We're looking for this in construction and everything we do. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, on we go.